burning fat. That's where it's at. Hey guys, Aston the Running Guy here. Today I want to be talking about the importance of aerobic fitness. As you saw there in that silly intro there, fat burning is one of the reasons why we need to do our aerobic fitness. In this video I'll be talking about when we actually structure in aerobic fitness as the priority. So it may be a base time of the year if you're going to periodize your training. Uh, we always do some amount of aerobic fitness during our normal weekly schedule, but today I'm talking more about when we actually do a periodization of that actual slow, easy training. So the main reasons that I'll go through, first of all, starting with the, the fat burning one, so becoming better at metabolizing fat for energy. Uh, to break that down, uh, as endurance athletes, we're always burning a proportion of fat uh, breaking down fat for energy or using our glycogen stores that are stored in our muscles and liver, uh, breaking that down into, uh, into sugars. So we're either burning a uh, fat or, or glycogen, um, which I may refer to in this video as sugar sometimes. So it's just a matter of how much of one we're burning to the others. So as endurance athletes, we want to actually be burning a high proportion of our fats in relation to our glycogen. So um, that all is dependent on intensity. The faster you go, your body will actually start to burn more of the sugars, more of the carbohydrates or the glycogen that's stored in, in your muscles as a source of energy because it's, uh, it's stored in the muscles, so it's, uh, it's easy to access and it's faster to actually break down when you actually need that fast energy source. So your body will always prefer the carbohydrates over energy, uh, sorry, over fats. Um, but as endurance athletes, we actually want to uh, become um, more efficient at, at burning more fats um, relative to, to whatever speed you're actually running at. So if you're running at, at, at marathon speed or half marathon speed or you're doing an ultra marathon, if you can burn more fats in relation to glycogen, then you're not going to be tapping into those glycogen stores that are limited. Uh, the general number gets thrown around is about two hours uh, maximum if you're fully carbo-loaded, uh, the term you'll hear. So um, once you're out of carbohydrates, we all know you're uh, hitting the wall. Um, so you really, really um, are struggling then. So the whole idea is you're always going to be burning some of the sugars and the carbohydrates, but you don't want to be burning it too early or, or too much um, early on in the race because then you are going to hit the wall. So, so with the aerobic training, as long as you're actually keeping your heart rate down nice and low, um, the compensation pace is, is the term again that they use a lot. Um, you're actually going to be, your body is actually going to become more efficient at metabolizing those fats for energy. Now the longer you do it and the more years you've been doing it for, the more efficient your body has, actually has become at, at tapping into those, uh, those fats as a source of energy. Uh, so it's very dependent, it's, it's very uh, important to keep your um, heart rate down low. Um, there's lots of zones floating around out there, uh, they use the compensation pace. But um, I found uh, my heart rate, uh, that I tried to keep it within about five beats um, of that heart rate. Um, and it's just a matter of finding where your heart rate is. But at the end of the day, it's, it's a very, very slow uh, effort. Um, but as you become um, a, a better runner, um, as far as metabolizing fats for energy, you just become fitter. Um, due to this um, increased aerobic fitness, you will actually be able to run faster, whereas your heart rate will still remain the same. So you'll actually be able to uh, put out uh, higher output, um, but not have as much demand on the body because your body has become more a a efficient, um, not only metabolizing fat for energy, the efficiencies actually come from actually becoming uh, better at, uh, at your stroke volume. So let's just say your heart is actually pumping out more blood uh, with each pump um, per stroke or per minute. So uh, if you can deliver more blood to the working muscles with each uh, heart pump through our ventricles, then it doesn't have to pump as often and that's generally why you'll see uh, a lower resting heart rate or your heart rate will actually uh, be lower for any given effort um, because it's actually become more efficient at actually pumping blood to those working muscles by actually pumping more blood with each stroke. The other thing is what you're actually doing there is you may have heard capillary density but capillaries are the little vessels that are actually feeding all the um, oxygen and blood into your into your muscles and, and getting rid of the waste products. So, so when you're actually doing a long aerobic um, training, such as a base period, 6, 8, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, whatever it may be, um, then you're actually going to make those capillaries more efficient um, and you're actually going to uh, increase the, the density. So how many are you going to have um, per, 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 per um, muscle cell? So, so uh, 
if you can actually pump more blood with each um, stroke of the heart and you can actually um, oxygenate that blood more by um, increasing your red blood cell count, your mitochondria, and actually getting that blood into those working muscles and get rid of those waste products, waste products quicker, then obviously you're going to be, the muscle cell has become more efficient, um, which is going to lead to uh, you becoming a better athlete. But back to the fat metabolism, um, if you can actually, let's just say we're running a 330 marathon, five minute per kilometer average, um, and you haven't done much aerobic fitness, you may be burning, say, 60% uh, fats and 40% glycogen. Now, if you went and did a 12-week uh, aerobic fitness training where you've kept your heart rate low, you may now be running at the same pace, the same intensity, five minute per K, 330 marathon pace, but actually be burning more fat. So you may be burning now 75% fat, 25% glycogen. Now they're just numbers as to use as an example, but the idea is that you're actually burning more fat, which we have a lot of fat storage on our bodies. Our body is very good at, at finding the fat to, um, to break down, to, to use as an energy source. So we don't have to worry about uh, ever running out of fat. It goes back to our primal days, we're in hunters and gatherers, and we'd have to be out there for days hunting for food. Um, and we're able to do that because our body is very good at breaking down fat for energy. Um, so if you can actually be burning more fat than glycogen in a marathon, then you're not going to be tapping into those glycogen stores at a fast rate and then eventually running, running low and hitting the wall. So it's all about just doing this long, slow aerobic work to become better, more efficient at burning your, carb your, your fats um, in, in relation to your glycogen so you can actually go further and faster for longer. It's also about increasing the efficiency of our muscle cells. So, like I said, increasing our pipe work, that, is, uh, that capillary. So, increasing that oxygenated blood flow into the actual muscle cells, and uh, so including with the waste, with the waste out. When we start to run faster, we start to burn more glycogen as as a need for that fast energy source. So, our body will switch over, burning more of the sugars, the carbohydrates, and a byproduct of that is the lactic acid that we all feel. So. We've all heard about lactic acid, we've all felt it. Um, when you actually do a lot of training around at that rate where you're burning a lot of lactic acid, then you, again, your body becomes more efficient at clearing it, your lactic acid. And obviously, if you're training a lot at where your body starts to produce more lactic acid than what it can actually uh, get rid of, then you become more efficient at that, at that uh, lactic acid clearance as well. But today, we're just talking about the aerobic fitness. The other thing you're doing is, um, because you're out there for longer and you're generally running a lot slower, you can generally run high volume, so you'll be out there for, 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 for further, so your weekly mileage may actually go up. So that generally means you're actually building a lot more strength in your body all over, um, a bit more integrity within the body, uh, whether it be the, the soft tissues, the, the, the ligaments, the tendons. Um, so, um, and it's also a time when, you, when because you're running slower, you've, you've got that ability to, to run with groups and have a good old chat. So it's also a good social side to actually, um, you know, we all have our running. I, I know many times you do a two-hour run by yourself and uh, if you're out there on your own, after one hour you're looking, thinking, you know, I just don't want to be out here anymore. Um, but when you run with a group, um, you're chatting the whole time and generally you'd be sitting around at a cafe at the end of the run and thinking, you know, I hardly remember doing that one because you had so much time you were distracted by the chatter. So it's a good social time as well when I find when I'm building up that base work. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's, it's what I find that maybe some people aren't doing um, enough of it. So there's, it may be at the end of the year, you finish your racing season, you've had Christmas, you've, you've come back from injury, come back from sickness, whatever it may be, and you need to reset and build that aerobic fitness back up. That aerobic fitness is, the word base is great because think of it about as, as the base. Uh, it's, it's, the, um, it's the foundation of all your other fitnesses and uh, all the other faster work and uh, the threshold work and the race pacing and all that, that those stresses and loads in the body. They all basically branch off our base. So the bigger aerobic fitness we have and the bigger base we actually have, uh, the, the longer um, we can actually draw out our competitive season, our racing season, because um, we're not going to run out of that aerobic fitness as quick um, than if you didn't have as much aerobic fitness. So it's very important to have a large aerobic fitness um, just because, like I said, everything else branches out from it. Okay, so to summarise why we need to do this aerobic fitness, this base work is to become better at metabolising fats for energy, so we're not tapping into our glycogen stores that are limited uh, whilst we're out there uh, racing. The other one is to uh, increase our, our pipe work, our, our delivery system into our muscle cells 
so we can actually get more oxygenated blood into our muscle cells and get the waste products out faster. So our, our muscles have become more efficient at actually handling that workload and also just to build that um, overall body strength, that integrity back into our body. And like I said, the social side of things, you know, it's, uh, it's very easy to do or a hard uh, threshold and interval work on our own. There's not a lot of chatter, but you know, at the end of the day, running is about health and it's about the social side of things and um, it's a good time to, to chill out a little bit, uh, give that body a time to sort of relax, refresh, and, um, and catch up on all the gossip. All right, so that's it. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, uh, please uh, subscribe. Uh, click on that little bell uh, symbol there so you get notification when I release a new video. Uh, like and share if, if you like this video. And always check the show notes and the details below. I also have a link over to my uh, website, therunningguide.com.au, where you can uh, contact me and hire me as your coach. Okay, thanks. Bye.